Any hopes of getting into the playoff picture? They got to win against the New England Patriots who have one less win than them with just two wins. That puts some pressure on Ron Rivera, of course, traded away Chase Young and Montez Sweat this week. Well, Ron Rivera is on the hot seat. He's been on the hot seat all season long. Yeah. And if you look at the odds of the coaches currently on the hot seat. Mm -hmm. Is he atop the list? He's atop the list. And maybe that's why we should update our tea time Mm, tracker. Very good. Um, Look, if you look at different sites, they're going to have maybe different orders. But he's he's on top of most lists. Mm -hmm. Um, This one is via Sportsline. Ron Rivera's plus 200 on the next head coach who will be fired. After him, it's Matt Eberflus with the Bears, plus 300. Matt LaFleur, plus 700 with the Packers. Brandon Staley, plus 900 with the Chargers. And then you go down the list, guys like Todd Bowles, Dennis Allen, and Mike Vrabel, who lost last night. Um, I said this earlier in the week. I believe, it's not a strong belief, but I believe he will not last this season. Which I think think most of us thought he was going to last season. I think he will be fired during the season. I'm going to pick the Patriots to win this week. And I'm going to pick the Seahawks to win next week. Mm -hmm. And then I think he will be canned. I think this week's big. I really do. I mean, if they lose this week to a bad offense that scored, you know, they, they they struggle to score two touchdowns in a game. Then... It's it's going to ramp up big time. Now, if they win and they're four and five and they're still in the mix for a playoff spot, then that Seattle game is obviously going to be huge. But yeah, I would say if they lose Sunday and then they lose the Seattle game, that would have been what's that seven of eight, eight of nine maybe, or eight that, of nine. Well, seven of eight because they've lost five of six. Yeah, so that's seven of eight. Then yeah. I'd say you know, chances of him getting fired are obviously going up. But yeah, he'll have won one this game is, in a month. This is months. a huge week. This is a big week. What people say, the rumblings that people kind of say is that is that the enemy is actually kind of running the show. Yeah, um, that's what we're hearing. Ron is like you know kind of overseeing, but it's kind of he's just like show. the CEO. Right, yeah. it's, a, it's kind overseer. of that stage, and he's kind of been that way. But really, this year, like Scott Turner wasn't running the show last year, and so it would actually be an easy transition to blow out Ron, and then if Ron goes, Jack will go. They're like tied at the hip, um, and then just give the enemy a chance. Yeah, I tell you, I watched all the pressers, and I know Cakes is going to do his bit. I watched all the pressers on the YouTube yesterday. Of the of commanders, so they had the enemy at the podium. They had yep. um, Del Rio at the podium, and Del Rio never talks. Yeah, and I think he has to once a week. Yeah, yeah, and then oh, we uh, just never hear him. Rivera. Yes, oh, Rivera yesterday at the podium, and Rivera and Jack. I'm telling you, they just sit there, and this is just me reading into it, but they just they're totally going through the motions. Um, the enemy actually still has a little, a little, little. Step in him. You know what I mean? Fire. He's got still got a little in him. Now he's yeah. just giving cliche answers. So he doesn't really cliches. give you anything. <laughs> right. But he still has a little energy to him. Yeah. Jack I would agree. and Jack and Ron, the energy level is like at a one. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. All right. So And they're not stupid. They know that, you know, they know there's the gonna be on a, the wall. Yeah, they know there's but gonna I be a coaching. I think that change. the enemy either is naive to it or he thinks he still he's going to have a shot at maybe turning this around himself. I mean, if the offense continues to score points and the defense is killing them and they're losing because of the defense, mm-hmm. then he's got a right to think that. Yeah. So if you're going to switch it up, and look, Josh Harris has shown he'll he'll make big moves in season with the trades, obviously, of Sweat and Young this week. If you're going to pull the plug on Ron, I think – his new his tea time would then be on December fourth. And let me guess, that's the bye week. It's heading into the bye week yeah. and could potentially be after embarrassing losses on national TV Thanksgiving weekend right. against the Cowboys. And then they have a home date the day before this, December third, with the Dolphins in town. Right. Do you dismiss no that's way your they, personal tea time tracker? No, because this is, this is what like this is a, a good spot for Josh Harris to do this it. This is when right. Right. it'll happen, not when he would do it. I know, because because it would have already happened. If, oh, yeah, if, both if of us would have whacked him. I would have whacked him in the offseason. So season. this would give Biennemi, if they gave him you know, the reins, a four-game a four game full-on audition at the end of the season. By the way, when the Raiders blew out McDaniels, yeah. 
He has four years left on his contract. <laughs> I mean, that's beautiful. And they're still paying Gruden. Lovely. I mean, yeah. think yeah. about that. I mean, what is Mark Davis and his band of idiots doing out in the desert? Like, Well, what? I mean, the the worst move was hiring him in the first place. Horrible hire by yeah. Mark Davis and company. But, yeah, man, this, these guys just don't care. They just stroke checks. Yeah. Big time checks. Unbelievable. I mean, how much is he... Does he have coming in over the next four years? Got to be like twenty five million or so, probably, right? Probably, probably six million. Probably a year. something in that neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Can you imagine? <laughs> that was the greatest thing ever happened to him. <laughs> I just don't think you have to wait for the buy. Do you, what? Do you dismiss? I think JP's got a good scenario. I actually think they're going to win this week. But if JP's scenario plays out and they lose to the Patriots. Then the you know who knows they lose the Patriots or probably put up some fight it against could the Seahawks. Happen. But, but if they lose two in a row. And having lost seven of eight, mm-hmm. you think that Josh is just going to let it keep going? I just don't think he's a rash guy. I think he's willing to let. Is that rash? He, I, I think he knows. No, I don't think it's rash. He knows it's a lost season. So, like, what? Is, what does it? What does two weeks difference make? If, if he lops, I think he could get fired this week if they lose to the Patriots. Like, I, mm-hmm. I mean, we don't know. None of us can go inside Josh Harris's head. I'm just speculating, like the rest of us. Um, seems like the conventional wisdom is they're going to give Ron the whole season. I'm going to say they're not going to. And some of it might be a PR move, right? He's done things which the fans have supported, including the fans, by and large, like the Chase Young and Montez sweat deals. Mm -hmm. Like, get him out of here. Defense stinks. Get him out of here. Get something for for these guys. The fans are out on Ron. Right. Yeah. And so in a couple weeks. I go ahead and call in right now and defend Ron. No, you open, won't. open up the line. You won't you find anybody. <laughs> open up the line. They'll look just like they look right now. Defend Ron. <laughs> defend, defend Ron or Del Rio. You he found Ron. Heineke. Okay, no, you can find <laughs> you could find certain things, but like, se- tell us why Ron should be here this year and next. Why he should this live year? out his contract. Oh, it's a. I already. I said this to Kicks. It's a thank you for your service. We're not going to embarrass you, right? Because you were the you were the face of all of the scandal. You had to go eat the S sandwich uh, because Dan was on his yacht. So this is your golden parachute. We're not going to embarrass you. Thank you for your service that you did uh, with with the team. He I can see that being a thing. He brought in his trainer from Carolina with all his uh, illicit yeah, drugs. Yeah, but that that was minor. Compared That's minor to all, compared all the Dan to what Snyder Dan circus that was going yeah. around. Ron, yeah, Ron had to deal okay. with that circus. That's so so thought. basically, you're just throwing him a bone. You don't embarrass him. Thank yeah. you for your service. I, I just want to say this: Cakes keeps bringing up the bye week, and and that does happen. But the Raiders didn't wait for a bye week. No, like you, if if you're, you're right. done with a well, guy and also, you're embarrassed, the Raiders are also. Crazy Mark Davis off the Al Davis tree, like the it's okay. a different brand of ownership there. Same in Vegas. record as the Commanders, yeah, three and it, five. I think JB's point is they don't always wait till a bye week to no. fire somebody, right? Oh, yeah, but I, like, I, but but if you're Josh Harris, why wouldn't you? If you're going to do it, why wouldn't you have done it already? Like, you know, you're not going to retain him. You're not seeing anything special from well, him because you do give him a chance to um, yeah. go on a run you do give him a I chance, think they're him a chance. He's still relevant. They, I, I think that josh harris again none of us know i think josh harris probably was giving ron rivera a chance if he gets the team to the playoffs if they're selling out games if there's buzz in mm-hmm. town he i think he'd if bring you're gonna back. if you're gonna fire him mid-season it would be after this week uh, if they lose to the right. patriots because that would essentially be three bad really bad teams you lose to if, he, if they well, lose the this Eagles week, game, but three total. Sorry, not the Eagles game, yeah, not three in a row. Bears, you were saying Giants, three. Total. No, I'm saying yeah. Bears, Giants, and then now yes. the Pats. Yes. So if if he loses to the Patriots, I could see him doing it after the Patriots game, before the Seattle game. If he, but if he doesn't, I, I think he lasts the season. Shouldn't he? If, though? You're, if you're not going to fire maybe him after he, the maybe Patriots, maybe he's an owner though that actually likes to embrace the tank because of what he did in Philly. Maybe. And so know. he's like, you know what, Ron stinks. Right. And we'll, we'll keep losing. Yeah, yeah but he doesn't good. mind improving draft position. Yeah, but, he might you know, be right. Like letting him twist in the wind. Shouldn't he? Shouldn't he what? Pull the plug on Ron Rivera a thousand times. Yeah, if they lose to the Patriots, fire him already. Give Eric Bieniemy a chance or whoever else you want to try as an interim coach. I think it depends coach. on. A, I, I think it depends. Well, there would on the be nobody else. That's too. enough of a body of work. Three and a half seasons to determine he's not the guy. We already know. We all know he's Everybody. not but the JP, guy. But, JP, the only guy that, that, that would take over would be Biennemi. There's nobody else on that staff that would take over as head co- interim. I don't know that anybody think. expected Antonio Pierce to take over. Well, he's I don't a know linebacker's who, coach. I don't know who else they have. And Biennemi's the biggest name they have. <laughs> it would be Biennemi, I would think. 
It would have yeah. to be the enemy. It would be the yeah. enemy. It'd be a great PR move for the league. It'd be great for Josh. Might not the be great for the enemy, sh- but <laughs> I don't think it'd be great for the enemy. I will say this: having watched those pressers yesterday, as I said, Jack and Ron kind of like going through the motions. I mean, giving you nothing. Eric doesn't give you anything, but he's at least motivated, and he kept saying things. I listen. I think he's mediocre so far, but he has had some moments. But I will say he does motivate you because he's like, he, he kept saying, I promise you, we will get better. Mm-hmm. I promise, like, you know what I mean? And I'm just watching that going, okay, I'm in. I, I believe you. He's like, I pro- one thing I do know is I promise you that that will improve. I promise you the effort will be there. And I pro- you know what I mean? And I was getting motivated. Well, you know, right now, guys, right now, right. His Dog. results. The, the, the flame is extinguished, Kate. His results. They are the twelfth uh, passing, twelfth ranked passing offense, twenty seventh ranked rushing offense. So when you put it together, they're middle of the pack. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's getting better. It's trending better. Yeah, but you and know then what? He's points helping. four. They are seventeenth. The the good thing for him is he's developing a young quarterback. Like he can go to like to the next team. If Ron's trying to glom team, onto that. Though. He can he can say, look, <laughs> I developed a guy who had, had one start coming into the year. He's a fifth round pick, and look what I did with him. Yeah, you like notice he, that Ron keeps bringing him up every time, every chance he gets. That's, yeah, that's the one guy brings up. It's called his life preserver. Yeah, Sam yeah. Howell is his life. But it's preserver. not going to work. I mean, no, it's not going to save no. him. It's not good. It's not. All enough. right, hold on. Let's go. Let's go to Ed in Massachusetts. Ed, what's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey. What's up? I yeah, I just said it's only my opinion. Um, I you know I was listening to all the press conferences, all the players, uh, their opinion of the two guys, and um, they wished them well about. Uh, but none of them had, like, a real warm departure with any – it almost sounded as though they couldn't wait for these two guys to leave. It sounded as though they were a major distraction, and that's why they got rid of them. He made the comment of, I have to practice better. I mean, how do you practice better? You know, when Chase said, uh, you have to pay attention on the practice field. It, it, just, so, it just seemed as though they got rid of, like, the two class clowns that were running the show, and no one wanted to keep them in check. And it sounds as though the players are actually happier that they're gone. I don't know if that's true. I saw I don't some think tweets from true. some guys, and they, they were we well don't know. I think yeah. people get resigned. Like, I saw Jonathan Allen interviewed afterwards, and he says this on, on our show all the time. It's business. They all know it's part of the business. And I don't think they were throwing a party because Montez Sweat yeah, and Chase I mean, Young I, were I out. I wouldn't say they were unlikable. I mean, I would think they'd like those guys. Do they think they're a better defense without them? Right. Who knows? But, I mean, Jonathan Allen always says it starts with me. Again, there's really few, very few things that surprise me in the NFL. I understand it's a business, and, you know, I wish them luck and the, the rest of their career. And, yeah. <laughs> wow. He doesn't seem that vexed by it and, and moved by them being out of the locker room. Did you see, by the way, did you see... The video went viral of James Harden going into yes. the locker room for the, the first Russell. time. And the one day, Terrence like- Mann, like Westbrook kind of dapped him up. Yeah, but it was pretty says, It was pretty mild but considering their background. Terrence Mann, like James Harden, walks into the locker room for the first time. And he literally did not. He, he moved his eyeballs, but he didn't move. <laughs> he didn't say not, what's up. Not are these guys are so, like, too cool? Like, is Let's that see, part of it? I, I don't know. I, I, I saw that, and I saw Russ. And Russ was mildly excited to see him. I would say mildly. Right. And those yeah, guys I have mean, a long history. Yeah, I, I, I think know. you. Well, I mean, they see each other all the time too. Um, yeah, but it's different now. You're on the you're on the same team again. I don't know. I, Wild. And yeah. when it comes to Jonathan Allen and the rest of the team, I think look they they kind of expected it. These guys were fielding questions about it last week. We asked Jonathan Allen on Monday. And they, we asked them the week before. They had to know, like when when you assemble a line like that and you pay them all that money and you get zero results, you're not going to keep the status quo. Well, Things are going to get shook up. It's going to happen. Maybe they didn't expect both of them to be traded. I but didn't think both would. They go. probably I, expected at least I one. I expected of them. Sweat to go. I did not expect Chase Young and him to go. Here's where yeah. I'm hopeful. On Sunday after the game, I tweeted they should trade Chase Young mm-hmm. and Montez Sweat. And regardless of what Ron Rivera says and tries to spin, I believe, could be wrong, that this was an owner-led move 
both of them, put them together. Yeah, I mean, with his no one analytics guy, yeah. and he was like, "We're going to ship these guys out and get something in return and start acquiring draft picks." So my hope is that Josh Harris listens to the fan base, listens to kind of the pulse of the people, and if they lose to New England, like if he beats New England. He's not going to get fired. But if he loses to England, then he just says, yeah, what's the point? He's I, making the right moves. I disagree. And maybe like, his analytics guy is saying, here's the value of keeping Ron Rivera. In my opinion, and here's the value of moving on. Owners and front office people should never listen to goofball fans and the fan base. I understand like, that. You have, to, you have to work independent of no, that. No, no. I'm just saying I'm hoping his independent thinking is mm. similar to our thinking. Right. My thinking was trade him, 29th ranked defense, trade them all. And he did that. So maybe now he makes the right move. To me, the right move is you move on from Ron Rivera well, let's, now. Let's see what happens on Sunday. I think he should be canned. If I they mean, lose. is he week to week? If that's if is he, is he week to week? I, I don't see the I value also of think keeping that him. Maybe there's a possibility that Harris likes Ron as a person, not so much as a coach. And I, I'm kind of along the same lines as Valdez that he's kind of doing him a solid. He's not going to embarrass him by firing him during the season. But as soon as Black Monday comes. He'll be fired. Unless things spiral out of control around the bye week where he's just like, this is untenable. We have to make a move. Yeah. I don't think he wants to come off as the next Mark Davis. Mark Davis. I just read, (laughs) and I don't know if this is true, I just read that McDaniel's deal was $10 million a year. So that's $40 million he's got coming? Well, that is... Uh, you know, more proof that he signed a six year, $60 million more deal. More proof that Mark Davis is a gigantic and, buffoon. And he's paying Gruden no. $10 million. <laughs> More More proof that he's wealthy beyond belief. Yeah. So, he's, that too. so he's yeah. paying $20 million a year to guys who aren't coaching anymore. Right. Think about that. <laughs> yeah.